Hello, Robin. Everyone loves the Drake fans. Uh, here's another video for you. Uh, if you haven't figured this out yet, my New Year's resolution was to create more content. And so far today is January 4th. If you look up oh, the clock, just struck midnight right there, Monday, January 4th. Um, and so this is the fourth video of the year. So I've produced one per day. So woohoo. Um, but I wanted to go over today this article that came out on uh, CBR. Uh, comic book resource. I think it's, does it stand for resource? What does the R stand for? I don't even know. Um, by Sage Ashford. Um, and the article was entitled Robin, Tim Drake's five most impressive wins and five worst defeats. And I had some um, thoughts on whether these wins and defeats were worthy of the top 10 list. And if um, some stuff was, uh, uh, excluded that I think actually should have been in the top 10 list. So uh, the article starts off, it says, Tim has defeated some heavy hitters in the game over the course of 20 years in the DC universe. He's also taken some pretty embarrassing losses. And this was produced, uh, came out one day ago. And I'm not quite sure where they got this from because Tim has been around for a lot more than 20 years. Uh, <laughs> so, um, if it was 20 years, that means he came out in 2001, which is crazy to think that was 20 years ago. But uh, the uh, growing up as a kid in the 80s and 90s, 2001, a space odyssey sounded so far in the future, and now it's 20 years ago. So <clears throat> Tim is, uh, excuse me for coughing, uh, Tim is a, a lot older than this. So I don't know where that came from. But anyway, let's take a look at it. So it says, Tim Drake can often feel like the odd one out amongst the Robins. Man, Tim is always getting disrespected. He's the smart one. He's the intelligent one. He's, anyway, uh, Dick Grayson has the experience and the overall fighting skill. Jason Todd has the aggressive aggression necessary to be a great fighter. Damian Wayne was trained by the League of Assassins. And I, okay, so Dick Grayson was an acrobat and he, I believe, was younger. And yes, Damian is this great fighter because of the League of Assassins, but Tim and Jason should be on the same, at least starting level. They both kind of started from the same place. And uh, I mean, just because you aggress have aggression doesn't mean that you're necessarily a great fighter. Tim has the, the logic and the skills. So uh, I don't know. Tim's always disrespected, but let's keep going. With that in mind, it can feel a little unfair for Tim, who was trained but never had the same aptitude for fighting that the rest did. Oh, come on. Have you seen him in those video games? All right. Despite this, Tim has defeated some heavy hitters in the game uh, over the course of 20 years in the DC Universe. He's also taken some pretty embarrassing losses as well. Some deserved, not some, not so much. So, all right. So, first, this was kind of weird because it's not – it's the 10s. 10 out of 10, and it's a win, but they just kind of mixed the wins and losses together. So that took me a minute to figure out what they were doing. But this was kind of weird. So this came in at number 10. So this is the last one on the list. And um, it says, this is debatable for Tim Drake's best victory of all time. So how does it come in last, but yet it could also be considered the first? So I don't know. That one, that's kind of weird. It says, during Tim's attempt to retrain himself, he ran into Lady Shiva again um, again, while alongside his new ally, Dava, a young woman who was training for a war in her own country. As it turned out, Dava had access to a special drug that granted its users super speed. With the aid of this Amar... I hope I say this right. Armamilla drug? God, that is such a Chuck Dixon made-up word. Um, Tim was not only able to fight Shiva, but easily defeat her in a one-sided battle. Now, this is not a lot of uh, exposition of what really happened in this fight. So if you are listening to Rob and Everyone Loves the Drake podcast, you know, we haven't got quite got to this part of events here with Dava, but this is what we're going to see in this whole cataclysm uh, storyline, which is in Robin 52. So we're not, we're not too far from it right now. Um, but a lot happened in this issue. So first of all, you have Dava, which she appears for the first time in issue um, 49, created by Staz Johnson and Chuck Dixon. Um, and um, she, again, has access to this drug that gives you skills and gives you combat 
Um, and for Tim, it gives him um, super speed, which is kind of weird. I don't know how you could claim it's your one of your greatest victories if you had to take drugs in order to get that victory. But so so be it, you know. Uh, you know, Mark McGuire gets, you know, steroids and wins the home run title. Tim Drake takes some kind of drug and beats Lady Shiva. But um, if you oh, actually, sorry, um, if you look at the um, synopsis, a lot happens in this. Uh, in fact, Tim Drake doesn't just beat Lady Shiva. He kills Lady Shiva right here. He kills her with his bare hands while he is under the influence of the Amarilla drug. Uh, and then when he kind of comes to his senses, he is King Snake there, right? King Snake is in this issue too. Um, then uh, he tries to give her CPR on Lady Shiva, but it doesn't quite work the way Tim expected because um, Robin gives up on the CPR, but the saliva in his mouth had the drug Armorilla in it, which then got into the dead Lady Shiva, which then brought her back to life. And she goes on an Amarilla fueled killing spree uh, among King Snake's men. Um, and I think at this point, King Snake is Bane's father. I don't know if they changed that or not, um, but I don't know. We'll have to see. And uh, then um, Lady Shiva just kind of gets away. Tim takes a plane to Gotham City and sees out at the window that Gotham is completely destroyed and burning in flames because of the cataclysm, the, the earthquake. Um, so that's some fun stuff we got coming up in the uh, Robin Everyone Loves a Drake um, podcast. It says here, this issue is part of the cataclysm crossover that swept through all Batman family titles during 1998, which is way more than 20 years ago. <laughs> Gotham City was almost completely destroyed by a massive earthquake. This story led into the events that would eventually create No Man's Land, which then eventually would create The Dark Knight Rises. All right, uh, let's take a look. Next one here on the list here. Damian Wayne. I don't even want to talk about this one. And I see then it has defeats. So then I was like, what? So they mixed it in. Uh, he's fought Damian a couple times. I don't know about that. You know, that first Damian shows up and he takes down Tim. But... You know, Tim is so loyal to Bruce, and this is Bruce's son. I just don't feel like Tim was, like, you know, giving it his all. And then in Battle for the Cow, he gets he gets beat by the DC editors more than and Dan DiDio more than he does Damian Wayne. I'm not even going to read what they said here. Uh, and then I don't even know how Tim is still alive if he got that stalagmite, you know, stuck in him uh, in the cave. Um, this one, though, I agree with the win, KG Beast. Uh, we went over this with the podcast, the whole storyline. I saw where Bullock took like a, a oil barrel to the face. Um, and so Tim not only defeats the KG beast, but he saves Bullock at, at the time. Um, and so I thought that was good. It says during a mission very early in his career, Tim Drake ran into one of Bruce's many, many Batman clone villains, the KG beast. Though I am, kids today don't even know what the KGB was back in the good old USSR. Um, Though Tim was, wasn't was supposed to stand a chance beating him in a fight, that wasn't how things actually played out. Um, and instead, Tim was so desperate to win this fight that he was not only capable of keeping up, but to win the fight outright. What he what really turned the battle for him was when he ripped KG Beast cybernetics out, unaware that it was an actual implant, which left the KG Beast unable to fight back properly. So good job, Tim. Now this one, I think we've talked about on the podcast, how ridiculous the baffler was. And yet he gets defeated by the baffler, <laughs> which is kind of strange. And it says that uh, Tim and um, Stephanie, as the spoiler, Stephanie Brown, uh, didn't take him seriously and get captured. And they get um, trapped in a building that was set to explode. But fortunately, Tim and Stephanie were able to escape. And he was supposed to be ridiculous. You can see here in his introduction, um, they're laughing. Clue Master and that other guy, Clue Master's friend, <laughs> is laughing at him. Um, it's funny how you can just look at this and know that that's Todd Grummet. Or Todd. Did I call him Todd? Tom. Tom Grummet. Those faces always look the same. Um, all right. Win. Spoiler. I don't know. He gets hit in the face with a brick in this one here. He does find out her identity and is able to kind of, uh, you know, lord that over her for a while. But when Spoiler was first introduced, it was not long after her father, Clue Master, had gotten out of jail. 
Frustrated with her father's desire to continue committing crimes, Stephanie suited up as the spoiler to try and shut him down, sending clues about her father's actions to the GCPD. I always thought that was such a great storyline, such a great um, way to to um, build a character, and calling her the spoiler and that she's spoiling her father's crimes. That was that was just brilliant. Um, Eventually, she was caught in her outfit by Batman and Robin, and Tim chased her down. Though he was capable of catching her, he also caught a brick to the face for his troubles, and she got to get away. So I don't know how that's really a win. That she got away, and he got a brick to the face and a broken heart. Uh, actually, they started dating, so I guess it was mended. All right, number five, win his future self. Oh, gosh. This here, um, savior character, that just... That did not catch on. That just came and went real fast. Um, how is this <laughs> better than um, the KG Beast and some others that were left off the list? I don't know. Um, it says this is this is incredible. No matter how it approach, what what does it say? This is incredible. No matter how it's approached, that that didn't make sense the first time I read it. The future version of Tim Drake is someone who's let who's let the planning and his own genius go to his head, causing him to take over the majority of Gotham. So there he is right there. They don't even mention his name as Savior. Um, when he gets the chance to go back in time and change everything, he single-handedly defeats Batman, Dick, Damien, and Jason. But then later, the present version of himself works with his friends and defeats him, delaying him long enough for the time stream to send him back to his timeline, which I, I guess that's a victory. I always feel like the other members of the timeline um, just kind of won that. And the best part on this one was when, you know, he met him and he looked, he said, who's Connor? That was so cool. All right. Um, number four, defeat bullies. This again, I don't really know if this is defeat. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but Tim and Ari were out on a date. Some bullies accosted Tim. He didn't want to just beat him up and show his mad fighting skills um, in front of his girlfriend and give away his secret identity. So Timbo, Timmy, um, gets his uh, butt kicked, but then he goes back and finds him and kicks their butt. But I still, I think I said this on the podcast, I don't see how if he just beat up these two guys that would like, oh, you beat up two guys. You must be Robin to like, you know, just kids. I don't know. Um, number three, a win outsmarting Doomsday. You know, this was great uh, when Tim was kidnapped by Dr. Oz. I don't really know if you outsmart doomsday, he's not very smart. He's just this relentless Hulk ripoff, <laughs> you know, sorry, Marvel, DC, Dan Jurgens, but it is, he's just the Hulk with pointy things and no, um, no human reasoning. He just wants to kill and destroy. Uh, so yeah. Okay. I guess that one's good. Uh, number two, I'm going to have to punt on this one. Um, I don't know this at all. Harm he looks like he jumped out of Image Comics there in like the mid '90s. Um, says here that he is a villain from Young Justice, uh, and I have not read that series yet. I know everybody, go ahead and say every bad thing you want to say about me. Um, I will one day. It's on my to-do list. So I'll take a pass on Harm and say, yeah, he deserves to be there. But I don't know, don't really know much about him. Um, and number one, I definitely agree with this, Raj. Raj Agul, Raj Agul. Um, this was such a great storyline in the Red Robin comic. Uh, if you have not listened to the um, Robin, everyone loves the Drake um, interview with Marcus Toe, you need to because it was so good. Um, getting to talk to him and interview him about this series, which was cut short, and unlike so many series that go out with a whimper, to hear Marcus Toe say that they were going to end that series. Um, on a high note and give it their best. That just made me so happy. So yeah, uh, that was definitely a great storyline, which then gets completely with uh, the whole new 52. Uh, and then the next time we see Tim, he's in some other kind of suit. That is not that. So uh, what, what are we talking about here? All right. So what was left off the list that, um, what was left off the list that deserves to be there? Well, first of all, I think the Joker, right? Uh, Robin 2, the second miniseries, Robin goes up against the Joker and he defeats the Joker. It, it ends with Robin 
uh, the last issue, if you've read it, when, or have one of the many, many, many covers. This was one of the start of like just insane amount of covers um, at the time. Um, Robin defeats the Joker, uh, and he gets caught. The Joker gets caught by the police, thanks to Robin, at the end of it. Uh, it's not one of those things where um, the Joker just disappears or gets away at the, the end. He's actually caught. And um, if you don't want to do that issue with the Joker... Oh, and I should say... Actually, let me this out of order. Um, this is just shortly right after the Joker did this to another Robin. So I'm not even going to get into that, but that's the cover of the very first comic book I ever had. Um, so if you don't want to go with uh, the Joker in Robin 2, the Joker's wild. Oh, how long did it take him to think of that? Uh, you could go with my all-time favorite Joker story and all-time favorite Tim Drake story, and that is Sleigh Ride, which appeared in uh, Detective Comics 826, where, again, uh, Robin kind of defeats the Joker, or at least gets away from the Joker. Uh, I love in this here, it says, Trivia, Joker has a body count of nine people in this issue. <laughs> That's the only, only uh, um, trivia about it. All right, so another victory that could go up there is defeating the scarecrow i mean batman was captured by the scarecrow he's freaking out thinks she lobs all over him and uh this is an important issue because this is the first appearance of tim drake in where is it there it is the all new batman uh batman hello the whole new robin costume right meet the new robin it was like oh man look at all those lines pointing towards it um and here you can see we talked about how there's so many different covers. So apparently there's a the direct market, and there's two versions where one says 457 and one says 000, which I'm not sure in the Indica. I don't even know what that is. Maybe it's inside or something. Then there's the newsstand, which I guess has both. Then there's the second print, and then there's the second print newsstand. And here it says 12 known copies. I don't know. That all that's known is 12 of those copies? That seems seems kind of low. Um, but uh, I'll have to watch this video here at some point. What website is this? Uh, CGC. Oh, CGC. Um, so I guess that's 12 known, gr maybe graded copies. Um, I think because I think there's more than that on eBay. Um, so yeah, so that that sh that could have been on the list. Um, also, uh, for defeats, how about uh, Robin getting defeated by Asbat's Jean Paul Valley. I mean, this is what kicked off the first issue of the ongoing Robin um, series, not the mini series, but the ongoing where he gets kind of <laughs> beat up and, and kicked out of the Bat Cave. I mean, that's a pretty bad defeat where you not only get beat, you get kicked out of the Bat Cave, and the new Batman's like, Yeah, I, I want nothing to do with you. Um, so I got to put that as a top 10 defeat. Way more than some bullies or the baffler. I mean, come on. Um, and don't forget, maybe the biggest defeat of all, a bunch of drones in the sky. Because they did, uh, well, he defeated them the first round. But then the second round, that kind of happened. And that was the death of Tim Drake. Or was it? Was he really just hanging out with Doomsday and Dr. Oz in a storyline that would just kind of fizzle out which i thought was going to be this huge big part of the doomsday clock and it wasn't even in it what the heck happened i don't even know um but i don't want to leave on the tim drake getting defeated here so let's go back to his 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 greatest victory here defeating the joker um i wonder um in the comments the you have any that i left out that you think that belong there in the top 10 list um, how many of these Robin twos do you own? I think I have a long box full of them. I, I thought they were so cool. Um, oh, well, so on that note, I think we're going to, uh, call it a day. So see you next time.